It's Cartoon Hangout Whoa, with Archaic King as your host. It's time to review some great cartoons from Craig of the Creek to Scooby Doo. Hello, lords and ladies, welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. Hello, lords and ladies, welcome to Cartoon Hangout, your place. For all things cartoon. I've never described myself as a Tangled fan before, but I'm certainly excited to watch more of the series after episode one, What the Hair. In a lot of ways, this is a superior episode to the setup movie, probably because that's all that movie was. This actually advances the story, or at least gets on with it, and was a lot more fun, even if it still has Cassandra in it. After the event of the movie, Rapunzel and Cass are out to find answers, and have gone to an alchemist somewhat hilariously confused with being a wizard. It's probably a standard first step after something magical or otherwise has happened, but it did lead to some funny scenes with the various tests being run. That's actually most of the episode, to be honest. So, while the plot does advance onwards, we do eventually get a moment where Rapunzel is close to getting the answer she seeks, only for the building to crash down around them. I kind of rolled my eyes at this part, only because I knew it had to be coming. She's not going to get answers in episode 1, so the writers have to do something to slow her down. I just found it a bit too on the nose. Obviously, I'm incredibly sympathetic to any writer having to carry a mystery an entire season or two, but you gotta find some more imaginative roadblocks. Or at least, less obvious ones. This is definitely not a huge strike against the episode, but I am wondering how the rest of the show will fare with this ongoing hair mystery. Will we get real progress, or will each episode end the same, with the characters nearly grasping the answers they seek, only to be denied them? There's a way to do that successfully and not tick off your audience. Hopefully that's what happens here. I'm also happy to report that the whole Cassandra not trusting Eugene so her puzzle doesn't let him in on it plot is over as of this episode. It's not that that particular storyline can't be done well, but it was very annoying, even when contained to the movie and most of this episode, let alone an entire season. I think it's clear that Cassandra is the one not to be trusted, and that's not my intense dislike of her character speaking. Okay, maybe it is a little, but when you ask someone to lie to a loved one so that you don't get in trouble, you're not exactly that good a person. Now, I do like the writing for this episode and how Eugene has to prove himself, even if he shouldn't have to. It featured a few pretty good moments here or there, and of course it led to him being let in on the secret. If there's one thing that can hold your story back, it's characters being withheld from secrets. It happened in Smallville and in Grimm, and it can happen here. But that's pretty much all there is. It's a pretty good, if somewhat standard start to the series. There's at least one sign this could all turn out bad, or at least very formulaic. But let's hope the writers have some interesting stories to tell before we get some answers as to how the hair grew back. And that's it for me. Now it's your turn to share your feelings on this episode down below. And be sure to subscribe to Cartoon Hangout for all your cartoon needs. Thanks for watching, and take care. Hello lords and ladies, welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. I know, it has been quite a while since I last stuck my head out of the sand and gave my opinions on an animated series. I recently did a short little video about the reasons for that, so I won't go into them again. Instead, let's just get to Tangled the Series Episode 2, Rapunzel's Enemy. I wasn't actually excited to watch this episode. I saw a preview for it a while back, and it seemed like a really safe, standard episode that you see in nearly every cartoon. The main character or supporting character discovers another character, usually either a new character, background character, and only sometimes another main character doesn't like them and spends the entire story attempting to rectify that. I yawned and thought, wow, really tangled? Two episodes in and we're dusting off that oldie? It's a plot that can be done well, I just was bored and incredibly unenthused about it. To my surprise, the episode was pretty fun. Yes, the plot is still your typical cartoon plot, but the actual writing for this episode showed that the writers can make even a dusty old story seem fun again. I won't go as far as to say they do anything particularly new or groundbreaking with it, but it's more in how it comes across. In the episode, Rapunzel is startled to find that someone doesn't like her, probably the first real person to not like her, and it starts to drive her nuts, and she ends up disguising herself 
in order to find out why Monty, the guy everyone loves, just doesn't seem to like her. The results are pretty amusing and a little heartwarming from time to time, and in the end, the two don't actually become friends. Which you could say is a twist, but at this point, where else do you go with the storyline? They either become friends, or they don't. I can't say I actually liked that they went that route, because it seemed like they would become friends after all they went through. I don't know, it seemed like an unsatisfactory conclusion, but I suppose the lesson is a good one. Not everyone will like you, and you can't do anything about it. Eugene and Cassandra's little storyline, on the other hand, wasn't really all that interesting to me. Their subplot crosses paths with Monty and Rapunzel's, but they weren't all that needed to do even that. Not to mention, I still am not warming up to Cassandra, and the writers seem to just really want us to embrace her despite never showing us how she or Rapunzel even became friends in the first place. It's not easy doing that when she hates on literally the only other main character in the show. And so far, that's all there really is to her character. She's a chick who dislikes Eugene and picks on him. Until the writers over at Disney give me something more to work with, I'm staunchly against her inclusion in this show. Other than that, I'd still say this was a good episode. It doesn't have the most original stories, but the writers managed to work around it and deliver a fun story involving Rapunzel and her new enemy, Monty. But what did you think of this episode? Share those thoughts below and make sure to hit that subscribe button for more cartoon reviews. Thanks for watching and take care. Hello, lords and ladies. Welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. In Friday's episode, Fitzherbert P.I., we get more of a spotlight on old Eugene, which I definitely appreciate. The show's called Tangled, after all, not Rapunzel, so giving us an episode devoted to his character is a step in the right direction. He's also just a really fun character, even more so, I think, than Rapunzel or Cassandra. Though I think you can argue pretty well that he plays excellently off them both, as opposed to if he ever had his own solo series. And it's not like the other characters aren't fun in their own right, but Rapunzel gets a really significant backseat in the story for this one. Her subplot focuses entirely on figuring out how to pose for a painting, and while that story does cross over with Eugene's at some point, it's mostly a blink and you'll miss it kind of story. In a way, it's a complete reversal of last week's episode, where Eugene and Cassandra's story could have been left on the cutting room floor and not been missed all too much. Well, it was almost a complete reversal. I'd say the crossover between the two plots was done a lot better than in episode 2, as it's thanks to Rapunzel's storyline that Eugene successfully wraps up his. So, yeah, better than him feeding the wrong berries to a gopher. This episode also finally gives us a much better portrayal of Cassandra. I mean... It's only been three episodes, so it hasn't been too long a wait, but three weeks is a long time to wait when you're trying to find something or anything to like about her character besides her cute design. Now, this Cassandra, I can maybe get behind a little more. She's sassy, doesn't like Eugene, but isn't above helping him when she knows he's right. Her actions in this episode really help me like her a bit more than I have been, and that's kind of awesome. Still not my favorite character, and I'm anxious to see how she and Rapunzel became friends, or why she doesn't like Eugene, despite her best friend knowing he's a good guy. The actual substance of the episode is more or less your tried and true rogue character tries to be good story. As with the last episode, it seems Disney's writers are not too keen, just yet, on doing any twists or new stories that haven't been done elsewhere to maybe slightly better effect. Like with the last episode, that doesn't mean the episode is terrible. Seeing Eugene join the city guard is a treat and gives him the spotlight I think he deserves. But it's nothing new as far as cartoon plots go. And it is fairly typical of a cartoon, which gets resolved in a pretty standard generic way as well. So basically the pluses are the much earned spotlight on the show's other main protagonist, something redeeming in the Cassandra character, and a fun entertaining if unoriginal story. Those are my thoughts, now what are yours? Share your opinions on Tangle the Series Episode 3 down below and please make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want even more cartoon content. Thanks for watching and take care. Lords and ladies, welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. I know this review is really late, but if you wanted to know my thoughts on episode 4, Challenge of the Brave, which saw Rapunzel face off against Cassandra, then here it is. I actually loved this episode.
I know what you're thinking. Whoa, you love an episode that heavily revolves around Cassandra, who you hate? And yeah, I kind of do. We're not remotely far into this series, and I haven't been the biggest fan of Cassandra. She's abrasive, she serves as a sort of obstacle for Eugene and Rapunzel, and she's just a little fool of herself. To draw comparison to an older anime series, she's closer to Sakura from Naruto. Obviously, the two characters are very different personality-wise, as well as their roles in their individual stories, but Cassandra just really reminds me of her. This episode still has all of those personality traits of Cassandra's, but it puts them in a slightly more sympathetic light that I can get behind. Up until now, she's just been a jerk with no real reason for why. Now we get some more insight into what it's like trying to prove herself, but at the same time, being Rapunzel's handmaiden. One side of herself, her true self, is the tough butt kicker we've seen so far. But then she also has to put on a dress, act ladylike, and be nothing more than a handmaiden. She's got to deal with the laughs and mockery her fellow warriors put her through because of this. So she enters the challenge of the brave to show everyone that she's more than Rapunzel's lady-in-waiting. Only for poor naive Rapunzel, who thinks it's all a game, to enter alongside her friend. What ensues is a really entertaining episode as we finally see some cracks in their friendship. Again, until now she's been solely antagonistic towards Eugene. But in this episode, her competitiveness and need to prove herself throws Rapunzel into her path. And it is a delight, and I mostly rooted for her. Eventually, they do make up as one would expect, with Rapunzel showing some nice growth as well as Cassandra. It's always nice to see a character or two learn they were in the wrong and not just slide under the table at the end of the episode. Plus, seeing the two women go at each other was very fun to watch. It surprised me a little to see how far Cass would go to see Rapunzel get thrown from the competition. She's pretty ruthless, even with her friends, especially when she's trying to step out from said friend's enormous golden-haired shadow. I'd love to see the writers put their friendship through its paces even more as the series develops, considering Cass does seem to make a habit of getting Rapunzel to do things you know she shouldn't. As for my main man Eugene, he gets a little silly side story in this episode too. He is constantly being too loud for the crowd, and is moved around a lot. It's a funny distraction from the main plot of the episode, but not too annoying when it does happen. The only complaint I recall having about this episode is Cassandra taking out such a big foe. Logically, it didn't make much sense, as there's no way Cass is strong enough to do that. I see it sometimes out of strong female characters in fiction, and it usually stretches my suspension of disbelief. If she managed to outmaneuver him, that'd be fine. Flipping him, though? Nah, <sighs> I don't buy it. In closing, though, I do want to say that this was a really great episode. The writing was high quality, with a great story that managed to make me warm up to Cassandra even more. We'll just have to see how this week's episode, which I'll try to review as soon as I can, will go in that regard. And those are my thoughts on last week's Tangled the Series episode. What did you think of it? Share your opinions down below, and I'll see you soon for more Cartoon Hangout. Thanks for watching, and take care. Hello, lords and ladies. Welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. It feels as if some of my complaints, if you can call them that, about this series are being addressed with not only this latest episode, but last week's. Last episode had Cass and Rapunzel at each other's throats as they both competed in a challenge, and this episode sees the whole Eugene versus Cassandra issue brought to the absolute forefront. I think the audience stand-in for this episode is absolutely Rapunzel, as I'm sure some fans, like me, have gotten tired of the two characters bickering. And so has Rapunzel. So much so, she locks him in a dungeon cell to play a game about working together. It's a brilliant, if often used, little storytelling technique to get your characters to work their issues out while not needing to come up with some grand adventure or danger for them to face. Just shove them in a tight space or similar situation and let the sparks fly. But it works pretty well here, even if I would have preferred more of them talking to each other and getting to know one another than what we ended up getting. As it stands, we get a little more insight into Cass's character than we got with last episode, with how she didn't know her birth parents and was raised by the Captain of the Guard. This, of course, lines up nicely with Eugene's own childhood, which gives the two characters some common ground to work through, if Cass hadn't thrown up her shields pretty quickly. 
If this were a more story-heavy, continuity-driven series, I'd say, well, we'll get back to that later. But by the end of this episode, the two are back to bickering with each other, so I'm not optimistic it'll happen. I would love to see the characters evolve over the course of the show instead of doing the usual reset by episode's end, but even if that doesn't happen, the show is still pretty entertaining. I loved watching Eugene and Cassandra get along, well, mostly along, and it wasn't as annoying as past episodes to watch them fight, either. I think Cass is definitely getting better as a character as the writers allow her to be a little more human than the cold, never-flinching warrior lady-in-waiting she has been. And since we're only a few episodes into the season, maybe that was always the plan. But, like I said, shows like Tangled tend to do a soft reset at the end of episodes, but given this is Disney, maybe we'll get a little more continuity in the form of character growth. Maybe. I won't hold out too much hope. Either way, I really enjoyed the episode. I love that it was Rapunzel who devised a silly little puzzle, and that it got Cass and Eugene to finally get to know each other a little better. Because I think if they weren't so busy misunderstanding each other, they'd be thick as thieves. But what about you, lords and ladies? Any thoughts on the recent Tangled episode? If so, leave them down below. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more cartoon content. Thanks for watching, and take care. Hello, lords and ladies. Welcome back to Cartoon Hangout for the introduction of a possible new series called Rapid Fire Reviews, where I quickly review several episodes, sometimes of multiple shows, in quick little bursts. I'll likely use this mostly when I'm behind on reviews, but I may also use it for shows I don't typically have time to fully review. Let me know if you're a fan of this format below. Now, let's get to the first review. Tangled, the series episode 6, The Return of Strongbow, turns the plot over to Eugene again for a misadventure with an old friend of his, Strongbow. Strongbow may come off as your stereotypical black comic relief character, what with his speech pattern and all, but he's actually a joy to have on screen whenever it's given to him. The story itself is your standard tale where a reformed Kong gets sucked back into crime, but these two characters make it hysterical to watch. And in the end, we get some emotional moments with Rapunzel feeling betrayed by Eugene, but him showing he has changed by coming clean. It's real heartwarming, and it's a good episode. Make sure to subscribe to Cartoon Hangout for more cartoon content. Thanks for watching, and take care. Hello, lords and ladies. Welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. Why does it feel like an eternity since I last reviewed this show? Oh, I know, because it last aired back in April, nearly three freaking months ago. Not sure what is up with Disney's scheduling, but it's kind of whack. How's the episode in like Flynn, though? Is it worth the wait? Yes, but then you can't go wrong with Flynn. Or Eugene. Whatever. This episode reminds me why I even like a TV sequel to a movie I was never really that fond of. It's good fun. Seriously, listen to the premise for this episode. Rapunzel's dad, sick of being pranked by a neighboring kingdom, enlists Eugene's help to steal the royal seal of King Trevor, and it is downright humorous from start to finish. Fitting, considering the theme of this episode is pranks, right? We're not far into this show, but it's nice to see some character growth between Eugene and King Frederick. Whether that will stick past this one episode, who's to say? Either way, you should get a kick out of watching these two grown men attempt to sneak into a castle and prank another king. It's easily some of the best written scenes in the episode, let alone the show. On the other side of things is Rapunzel's plot. It's alright. It seems that whenever she isn't holding the spotlight, and not just off on her own, the writers kind of struggle to give her anything of substance to do. There's some amusing moments in watching her learn about pranking, but Eugene's story was much better. And that's all I got on this one. Sorry if it's a little bare bones, but I'm running on zero sleep, so it's hard to think. To compensate, <laughs> why don't you lords and ladies let me know what you thought of the episode? Let's discuss it down in the comments below. And while you're scrolling down there, take a peek at the description where you'll find links to my Patreon and merch store. I'd appreciate you perusing those sites and seeing if you'd like to support what I do on this channel. Thanks for watching, and take care. Hello lords and ladies, 
Welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. Episode 8 of Tangled, Great Expotations. It's just an all-around great episode. It's really a Cassandra-centric episode with old Blondie taking a backseat. But then that's nothing new. When a science expo, kind of stretching my suspension of disbelief, but whatever, rolls into town, there comes an opportunity for Cass to finally be a royal guard, if just for that day. This has been her dream since being a child, so of course she jumps at the chance, even if it means doing a crap ton of chores around the castle before she can help out. In comes lovable science nerd Varian, who seems to have developed a crush on her and is willing to help if she becomes his assistant. It's actually his inclusion in the plot that helps push this episode up. It's not like the episode would suck if he wasn't in it, but then it would just be a typical science expo episode and Rapunzel designing inventions. His and Cassandra's dynamic this episode was really great. It cast her in a completely different light while also exploring more of what we already know about her. She's driven, and that drive almost costs her her friendship with Varian, but she turns it all around and ends up saving the day alongside Varian. This element of the episode is just super sweet and handled really well. She's not instantly trying to date the guy, I'm not actually sure of their respective ages now that I think about it, and instead they become good friends. Maybe that'll build to something, but again, not sure of the ages here. The episode also brings us back to the Black Rock storyline that we haven't seen since, gosh, what, episode one or the movie? Not much is added other than very enjoying the group to help solve the connection between the rocks and Rapunzel. So hopefully the next few episodes explores this a little more, because right now, it feels like the only reason they included it in this episode was to remind fans that they exist, and that plotline is still going to uh, go somewhere. Except it hasn't. But yeah, really heartwarming episode. I don't really think there's anything I even disliked about it, other than, you know, the Black Rock story and I'm not really going anywhere. It's just fun from start to finish, has one of the best Cassandra episodes since her time with Eugene in jail, and gives us more Varian. But what about you? Did you enjoy Sunday's new Tangled? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching, take care. Hello lords and ladies, welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. Under Wraps is a fantastic episode, and was originally my idea of what this show was going to be about in the first place. See, most of the episodes are still really fun, but I imagine the characters going on adventures every episode. Episode 9 is a healthy mix between what we've been getting and what I was hoping for. It's the Day of Hearts in Corona and everyone's celebrating except for Cassandra, so Rapunzel tries to cheer her friend up, only to discover Cass has a boyfriend, and now Rapunzel is doing everything she can to have them all do couple things together. This is a part of the episode that had me believing it was the same old thing that we've gotten in past episodes. Don't get me wrong, it was wonderfully cringy watching how lovey-dovey Cassandra got around Andrew, although I imagine at the time that this probably upset many fans who thought Cass was gay. Then the episode took a turn I wasn't expecting. Andrew turned out to be a bad guy out to destroy Corona by stealing some book that represented some big historical moment. I don't know, watch the episode. <laughs> I should have known he was bad from the start. You just can't trust a dude with a man bun. That's just a fact of life. From there, we get some really thrilling action sequences in the sky. The show doesn't have the best animation when it comes to dynamic action scenes, but it does well enough that you know what's going on and it still looks fairly cool. The show also shines in episodes like these because none of the characters are shown as less than capable than any other. Eugene has his style, as does Cassandra and Rapunzel. No one has to be demeaned for the other being empowered. Something not as common these days as you'd expect. The story for this week's episode isn't wholly original, but it is fun. Cassandra gets a love interest, although she knows she's bad from the start, but it does show off another side to her, though you could probably argue that's all smoke and mirrors. Either way, it's fun to see the writers really flesh her out as a character more and more as time passes. Oh, and finally, an episode that's balanced in terms of screen time. For the past few episodes, it's felt more like the Eugene and Cass show, with Rapunzel sometimes guest starring. This one, not so much. If you like fun, silly premises with a side of seriousness, you'll likely love this episode. It's not the best we've seen, but it is a lot of fun.
What about you? What did you think of this episode? And if you want to watch new episodes of the show, you can catch it on Disney Channel on Sundays. And while you're still here, check out my merch store and Patreon. I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and take care. Hello, lords and ladies. Welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. Tangled is a lot of things, but one thing I didn't expect out of it was a Law and Order-esque episode complete with trials, red herrings, and timestamps? Attila is opening a bakery, aptly called Attila the Bun, but it's sad to see most people are too afraid of him to actually visit. But not Monty, the baker everyone loves and is Rapunzel's arch enemy. So, when Monty's shop is utterly destroyed one evening and Attila runs away from the Royal Guard, it's no surprise when accusations are thrown around and he ends up being arrested. Thus begins Rapunzel's quest to prove her friend's innocence. It's a pretty good episode. You wouldn't really think of Tangled as a cartoon that would so closely mimic the police shows on TV like Law & Order, but here we are. It was a little jarring at first, I have to admit, as it doesn't quite fit the tone or really the overall idea of the show, but it quickly becomes very amusing and also very tense when the clock is running out for poor Attila. I wouldn't mind more episodes that do this, so long as it makes sense for the plot. One Angry Princess also turns out to be quite the suspenseful episode, even as you probably know Attila will be found innocent in the end. It's nice to get a good episode with Rapunzel front and center, too. See, Rapunzel spent the past few episodes not really doing all that much, and even the previous episode was almost more about Cass than it was about her. But in this one, we get to see her flaunt her crime-solving skills. A complaint I saw from one viewer of mine was that the show was leaning too hard into Rapunzel's innocence and nativity, so at times she came off a little too stupid. And I get that. I've never really had a problem with it myself, but then I also barely remember the first film. So if this was a problem for you, you'll be happy to know she's quite intelligent in this episode. There's even one segment where she retraces the steps of the crime a la Batman's vision from the Arkham games. It's incredibly silly, but appreciated. Plus, it shows the many outside influences on this episode's writing. Of course, in the end, the real culprit was the goat. Because of the suspense leading up to this dramatic reveal, I was actually expecting it to be Monty of all people. The show was even maybe slightly leaning towards that at one point, though it never fully committed to it in my opinion. The concept that it was just a goat and no serious crime had been perpetrated sort of fits with the show's lighter tone. While I personally would have preferred someone actually get arrested, what actually happened wasn't poorly done at all. Rapunzel showed off her smarts, stuck by her friend to the very end, and all made for an exciting episode. I briefly thought this episode wouldn't stick to landing after such a great episode last week. I'm happy to be proven wrong. Any thoughts of your own on this week's Tangled? What was your favorite part? And have you ever had to stick by a friend even when everyone else was against them? Share your stories below. While you're scrolling down to comment, check out the description where you'll find links to my Spreadshirt account where you can buy some t-shirts like the You Can't Trust a Dude with a Man Bun shirt based off of my review of last week's episode. Or you can find my Patreon that you can pledge to various tiers and support everything I do here on this channel. Thanks for watching and take care. Hello lords and ladies, welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. Wow, just wow. I never once expected an episode about Pascal to be even half as entertaining and emotional as this episode was. Well, first I confused Pascal with one of the guards, so I was initially thinking, who cares about one of the guards? Then when it turned out to be Pascal, I wasn't sure who wanted that episode either. But, lo and behold, the writers of Tangled have delivered unto us an episode that will be sure to make you tear up like a big fat baby. I don't know if the movie ever delved into this, but episode 11 will show you how Pascal came to belong to Rapunzel, and it's really freaking sweet. Like, rot your teeth out sweet. So sweet, you'll be paying your dentist a load of money for dentures, that's how sweet it is. The opening moments of Pascal's story reminds us viewers that this is Disney, and they've been killing mothers since the 20s. Well, definitely toned down, it's darker than I ever imagined this cartoon going, and I loved it. Also, uh, does that snake there remind you of the Hydra that Hercules faced in his movie? Because, yeah, it looks a lot alike. I really appreciated this opening to the episode as it sets up, well, the rest of it, obviously. 
Plus, we see little Rapunzel, and she's extremely adorable. The rest of the episode heaps on the emotion as Pascal feels forgotten by Rapunzel, who is often busy with her new friends or royal duties. It's not a perspective we've seen, and even I hadn't really paid too much attention to this little reptile, so I think the viewer can be put into the shoes of Rapunzel as well. I think this episode was excellently told, but it could have royally screwed up and the episode just be mindless filler. Instead, we learn to care about a side character and learn more about a lizard than we ever thought we'd learn. My only complaint is that the snake that Pascal faces as a baby turns up just when the episode needs some additional conflict in the latter half, and I just couldn't buy it. I know, I know, it's a cartoon, but do the writers expect me to believe that old snake was just waiting around for the moment Pascal to return? Despite that, this was an amazing episode. Certainly among my top five Tangled episodes, for sure. What about you? Any thoughts on Pascal's story? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching, and take care. Lords and ladies, welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. And for Christmas this year, I'm packing eight reviews of Tangled in One. Sure, uh, they're extremely late and should have been out long ago, but hey, I don't really have a good excuse, so let's get into today's rapid fire review. Episode 12, Big Brothers of Corona, reminds me immediately of why I love this show. After not watching this show for like two months, it's a great episode to come back to. Great animation, down-to-earth characters, superb writing and humor, and just a good amount of morals. Eugene and Lance are tasked with rehabilitating two of the cutest thieves I've ever seen, and the story is great. Even the subplot with Rapunzel and Cass is pretty good and isn't too distracting from the core plot, with the lesson Rapunzel learns playing into the lesson that Eugene learns and passes on to the two little girls. It's a heartwarming episode that had me almost cry. Definitely a near-perfect episode. Episode 13, The Wrath of Ruthless Ruth, was a really good Halloween episode. Too bad I completely missed out on reviewing it during October. No, it's not as scary as other specials, but I've always been a fan of the spooky stuff, not always the pee-yourself-in-terror kind. So, an episode where Rapunzel and patrons of the Snuggly Duckling are trapped by a spirit is pretty much up my alley. This episode features an excellent soundtrack and helps remind us why Disney is king of the musicals. And, in a way, the musical number felt like old-school Disney. There's also a good story here buried amongst the spooky hauntings about Rapunzel wanting to chase her dreams, but putting them aside for the moment because of her dad worrying about her. It was sweet, and it helps make Rapunzel not come across too callous in her desire to leave all the time. I'm sure it's all going to come to a head soon enough, though. What a weird coincidence, another episode where the plot is largely about an animal that I assumed going in that I wouldn't really like, and yet I did like. I even kept pausing it because initially it wasn't my speed, but eventually Max's enemy turned itself around and became pretty exciting. It follows Max and his rivalry with a new horse, Axel, who keeps stealing his thunder, but turns out to be a thief working to break out the foe from the first movie. Well, not the first movie. The, the TV movie. Her role is rather small, yet it was good to see her again. There aren't many reoccurring foes in the series, so you gotta make good use of them when you can. Anyways, the first half of the episode isn't anything too special. Newcomer makes protagonist, in this case Max, jealous, and everyone thinks he's being a jerk. But from there it gets a bit better, and by episode's end it was a rather enjoyable half hour. It's not the best episode, and I don't think it would ever make my top five, but Definitely do give this a watch if you wanted to see a Max-centric episode. The Way of the Willow introduces us to Queen Ariana's zany younger sister, who causes the Queen's birthday to spin wildly out of control. And it's a pretty fun one. I like the episodes that pair up characters we haven't normally seen get too much time together. And who would have thought we hadn't seen mother and daughter get their quality mother-daughter time yet? In the process, we learn way more about Ariana and her past. It's your typical straight-laced sister and carefree sister, but it's still entertaining to watch. 
I do feel like the series is really building up to Rapunzel leaving, especially with this episode. The ghost one set it up the most, but this one literally had a free-spirited character who travels the world in it. Oh yeah, Raps is definitely going to be more and more likely to want to leave. And the little pet Willow brings is great too. It really reminded me of the Mogwai in the Gremlin movies. Just replace food after midnight with a bell and it's almost the exact same creature. Again, just another really fun episode from the Tangled series. The next episode is 16, Queen for a Day. And what can I say about this episode other than wow? It's written less like a standard episode and more like a full-length movie. Well, a 44-minute movie. But still, it's got a lot of meat to it. Rapunzel's parents on the verge of death after being caught in a blizzard, Corona in a state of emergency, a friend in need, and more plot progression in terms of the mysterious rocks. This is honestly one of the best episodes in the series, if not the best. It has two amazing songs, a heart-pounding story, and even though you know everyone is going to make it through the events, thanks to this being a prequel, you still can't help feeling nervous about the characters. That's good writing in my opinion. Queen for a day really put Rapunzel through the ringer. She got to feel what it's like to run a kingdom, and even worse, have to make really tough decisions. And isn't that the best kind of story? You need to have these moments to forge a stronger character at the end. But this episode doesn't end with Rapunzel reforged. Oh no, she's doubting herself even more by the end. And what's worse, she's put a friend on a dark path to possibly becoming a villain? The drama. I love it. <laughs> I can't believe how entertaining this episode was. I know I've praised the show before, but it's just so good. You don't even need to have seen the original movie. Just catch up on Tangle the series right now. My only complaint with this episode is that I feel like I'm not sure what the level of technology is in this show. Everyone is seen using medieval devices, but then there's some sciencey machine underground. What? The symbol on Varian's father might have something to do with it, since it was on the door to the machine, I think? I I'm not sure, but I look forward to learning more. And I look forward to Varian's descent into possible villainy. Please don't chicken out on that storyline if they are indeed going in that direction. There's something very tragic about friends turned enemy, and if done right, ooh boy, is it fun to watch. This amazing episode is also now out on DVD, so go pick it up. It's that great. Painter's Block appropriately picks up soon after the events of the previous episode and deals with Rapunzel's inability to make decisions. While the story of Season 1 has from time to time reared its head, I'm pleasantly surprised at the story's progression and continuity's past few episodes. It's really picking up steam, what with the events of Episode 16 releasing an evil spirit in this one. What we end up with is a really decent episode. It's fun, has a pretty cool villain, and maybe points us to a big baddie for the season finale. This shadowy guy whose name I can't pronounce. Yeah, that would be cool. My prediction is he seeks a vessel, and Varian is it. Mark my words. Episode 18, Not in the Mood, is next up, and it sees our main cast have their personalities flipped. Now, it's not as cringy as you might expect. Normally, I'm not a fan of such plots, at least with how most writers handle them, but this time, it's pretty funny. Rapunzel was more hardened, Cass was upbeat, and Eugene wasn't sure of himself. And all because of Max and Pascal. While ultimately their fault... I could only laugh as they continually got themselves further and further into trouble. You may think it's just a harmless throwaway episode, but by the end, Varian gets his hand on the potion, meaning his personality will either flip or he'll use it in some way. The plot thickens, as they say, and I am so excited to see what happens next. Uh, so did I just say the plot thickens? Well, it explains. Loaded in episode 19, the quest for Varian. Varian sends Rapunzel and friends after a mystery scroll, and instead of finding Varian, it reveals a massive conspiracy involving dun 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 Rapunzel's father. Yeah, I know. Whoa. This episode was far too short, and I wish it was an hour long because I so want more answers than what we got. Is Rapunzel's dad part of the same group that Varian's father was with? I mean he has to be, right? And even Cass's dad is in said group. 
episode 19 was a lot more question than answer, so we'll have to wait for what I'm assuming could be the two-part finale coming later this month, but oh my god, what an episode! It's really entertaining, even though, again, we don't find out much more than what I just mentioned. Also, I just want to mention here that I doubt it's a coincidence that the Mystery Men's shadows at first look like Darth Vader from behind, because, you know, Disney owns the series. So, anyways, uh, that's it for this Rapid Fire review. I have covered every episode I missed while I was on break a few months ago, and the episodes I failed to catch up to when I initially first got back. Yay for me! These have been some of the best hours of TV I've seen in a while, and some of the best Tangled episodes this season has brought us. I mean, I was hoping the show would be story-oriented, but after a while I'd almost forgotten the ongoing plot with the Rocks, and now, all of a sudden the remaining episodes of Season 1 are just booming with plot. I love it. But what do you lords and ladies think of these episodes, and do you have any theories as to what's going on, or will be happening? Let me know below in the comments. If you'd like to watch videos earlier than they're available on YouTube, or have more of a direct same when I do here, consider checking out my Patreon, where for $5, you can help support this channel and get all of that and more. Or, snag yourself some Archaic King merch on my Spreadshirt. Links, as always, in the description below. Thanks for watching, and take care. Hello lords and ladies, welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. Now that Scooby Month is safely in the rearview mirror, I can finally focus on finishing off my Season 1 reviews of Tangled the series, starting with Episode 20, The Alchemist Returns. Things seem to be heating up even further with the return of Varian in this episode, when he asks for Rapunzel's help to steal the Sundrop Flower, which holds the power to maybe heal Corona and save his dad. I was a little surprised at first at how friendly he was because I predicted he'd be the villain, or a villain, for the remainder of the season. But then he shows his true colors by double-crossing Rapunzel later on, so it's cool to see that I was right. Despite how he was at the start of this show, he does make a great antagonist. The episode starts off tense, but a little slow, with Rapunzel confronting her father and not really getting anywhere after the events of episode 19. I feel for Rapunzel here, but I also can kind of understand her father's desire to keep her safe. Still, answers need to be revealed eventually for us to get what he's protecting her from. As we see later in the episode, the flower holds no power, and Varian deduces it's now within Rapunzel. Does the king know this? If so, why keep the flower at all? Questions, questions. A side plot of the episode is that Varian administered truth serum to everyone. So, now we see what he did with the vial we saw him pick up at the end of the previous episode. This storyline was more on the comedy side of things, though with grave implications, which helped keep the episode from being too dark. I enjoyed it, and was glad it was part of the episode. My favorite part is being Eugene worried over the size of his ears, and the guards being more afraid of Cass than the king. The actual main plot was Rapunzel and Varian using the old tunnels to gain access to the vault. This part was more or less straightforward, with the two former friends running into various traps, including a giant robot. It's pretty basic, but was nevertheless still interesting to watch, especially the little hints of Varian's true plan. Episode 20, The Return of the Alchemist, is a really good episode that serves wonderfully as the penultimate episode of the season. All that's left is the season finale. I can't wait to see how it ends. And that's it for me. What did you think of this episode? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching, and take care. It's Cartoon Hangout, whoa, with Archaic King as your host. It's time to review some great cartoons, from Craig of the Creek to Scooby-Doo. Episode 20, The Return of the Alchemist, is a really good episode that serves wonderfully as the penultimate episode of the season. All that's left is the season finale. I can't wait to see how it ends. Many months later. <laughs>
Hey, lords and ladies. So, uh, I suppose it would be a bit of an understatement to say that this review is kind of late. Um, it's hard to say why it took this long, other than the sheer power of my own procrastination, which got tangled up, pardon the expression, with the severe depression I was going through in the early parts of 2018. Um, it got so bad, I took a break from the channel. I got a little better and came back a few months ago, but obviously the long break just made it harder to get back on my feet. Um, I still haven't caught up on any of the shows I stopped reviewing, but I'm trying to do that now. But enough with that melodrama. Let's actually get to the episode at hand, the finale, Secret of the Sundrop. It's been a while, but I don't think I forgot too much that happened prior to this episode. Varian went to the dark side and was plotting something, and that something comes to fruition in the most 4D chess kind of way. Seriously, little guy made me so proud with all his little schemes. Rapunzel makes one move, and he's two ahead of her. She thinks she's two moves ahead of him, he's actually four ahead of her. It was, it was so much fun to watch. And honestly, there's nothing more fun than a villain who is, in his own way, the hero of his story. Varian just wants to free his father. And after you freed your father? After? Oh, well, I'm afraid Corona will pay for turning their backs on me. Oh, and uh, get revenge on all of Corona for ignoring him. Okay, so that part isn't so good. But most of what he says in this episode is pretty right. Poor guy did get ignored and no one came to help him or his father. Luckily, when his plans do unravel, as most villains' plans do, there does seem to be some help planned for him from the king and the princess. As for the rest of the story, it's going to be hard for me to really talk about everything. It is an hour-long finale, after all. Okay, so despite the tone of this episode certainly being on the serious side of things, it does, it does make room for some humor. A lot of which, well, most of which, is really great. Lines like this. Are you ready? Nope, not in any way. I'll take that as a yes. Or even this. Listening to P play for that long wasn't easy, but, uh, <laughs> that's a good one for the team. Oh, man, that sounds really rough. I feel sorry for you. By the way... I fell out of a tower! Really made the episode for me. So, while I wasn't biting my nails at what would happen next, I was chuckling to myself at the fine writing this show has. The musical, smack dab in the middle of the episode, was also pretty good. Uh, a real keeper, that one. I enjoyed seeing all the characters get in on it because this really is a huge climactic moment for them. The end of the road and all that. I also love that it went back and forth uh, between the villain and the heroes, basically singing the same thing about being as ready as they ever will be. It's good stuff. Not to mention the, the action scenes were nothing to blow your nose at. Uh, the show isn't maybe as finely animated as a purely action-oriented cartoon would be, but it does well enough, and the battle against Varian and robots was really entertaining to watch. He'd made corrections to them, maybe his plan, all along, that made them much more difficult to defeat. But the hero's strategy make up for that. Moving on, I'm glad the king went to save his wife alongside Rapunzel. They could have easily made him stay behind or join the battle, but they chose to depict a very brave man and father. Not many shows still do that let alone one where the main focus is a female character. Speaking of that, one theme that is prevalent in Tangled is this idea of being yourself and not letting others decide what you can do. It's pretty overt in this episode, being in one of the songs and in a lot of what the characters do and say. Now, as, as I get older, I tend to side with the adults or the authority figures more. So a lot of what Rapunzel's father does or says just really makes more sense to me than anything that Rapunzel is saying or doing. I think, personally, there are limits to the theme that Tangled has embraced in a showing off, but I can't necessarily find too much fault in it. It's at least a positive one, and the show does go out of its way to also point out that there isn't anything wrong with wanting to care about your loved ones, even if at times it can be stifling. I, I really appreciate that they show a counterpoint uh, a counterpoint of view, other than just saying, this is the only direction, this is the only path that one can take. I, I think that's smart writing, to not just have one opinion and 
show that that's the only one you can have. A lot of fiction doesn't do that anymore these days. If the writer has a viewpoint, that is the correct viewpoint. No one else's viewpoints will be considered or shown off. And in a lot of ways, that can be seen as sort of political propaganda. Um, but I'm glad that Tangled, the series, at least shows different viewpoints and doesn't necessarily say, this one's right, this one's wrong. Good stuff. Um, in the end, though, it seems Rapunzel's destiny does lie beyond the walls of Corona. And what better reason than that is there to leave your home? At least better than the overused concept of, I'm a princess, but I just want to explore, that you see a lot these days. So, while season one does come to a close, they're obviously seeding more things to come. Uh, personally, I would have preferred a bit more of closure to the plot this season, uh, but since they had already announced a season two before season one even premiered, I can kind of let it go. Obviously, it's more like season one and season two are like part one and part two, instead of how it usually goes with a show where it's like season one has a plot, the finale ends it, and then maybe some seeds that were planted somewhere earlier, maybe they'll come to fruition in season two, or season two begins a whole new plot. Uh, that's obviously not how it's going to go. It's pro it's clear that they had planned this out season one, season two. Or maybe when they knew that they were getting a season two, they were like, well, okay, cool. We can leave the season one finale a little bit more open to lead into season two. Personally, I just can't wait to see who the mystery person is with the sword made out of, I guess, the spikes. Or why Rapunzel needs to go on some quest. You know, what what is his destiny? Who decided that this would be her destiny? What is going on? Um, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't take me another seven months to find out. Thanks for watching and take care.